The main mission objective of Apollo 13 is a continuing one that we've had from 12, actually, uh, which is basically the scientific exploration of the moon. Just what the motto there sort of signifies. We hope to, of course, find out a lot about the origin of the moon and from that uh, the origin of our own planet, the Earth. We have, of course, a secondary objective in continuing the development and testing and uh, working of the uh, space systems itself for, of course, in future flights uh, to other places. The, uh, the basic objective, the particular objective of 13, of course, is a highland landing, uh, except for the planes, which we had in 11 and 12. We're going to go now into the, into the mountains and look at a different area. The first objective and milestone of the Apollo 13 mission is, of course, a successful translunar injection or uh, position going towards the moon. We then hope to make a successful lunar orbit, followed by the command module bringing the entire stack, the stack being the command module and the lunar module, down to an 8 by 60 mile orbit. After that, we'll use the lunar module to land in a mountainous or hilly terrain called Fra Mauro. The next milestone will be to explore Fra Mauro on foot to look and find out exactly how it was formed and also to deploy an experimental package called ALSEP. Then, of course, there will be the right rendezvous and uh, following the next day by uh, bootstrap photography or photographing future landing sites for other missions. And, of course, the last milestone will be the return home. To the, uh, to the layman, uh, all the lunar missions look very, very similar, uh, but there are some major differences. Uh, for instance, on Apollo 13, uh, we hope to uh, impact the S-4B, that's the third stage of the rocket, on the moon, and to use that uh, impact to record on the seismometers that were already placed there by 11 and 12, uh, the results of the impact so they can get a better idea and calibrate their instruments. This is before we even get there. Uh, another major difference between our flight and the other flights is the method of which we approach the moon for landing. Uh, in the past, the lunar module had done two burns with its descent engine. The first one was to get it out of a 60 a uh, mile circular orbit down to an 8 mile by 60 orbit. Uh, this was then, uh, after that, it then started the engine again to land. Uh, we're not going to do that this time. We're going to let the command module take us down. And this way we hope to save some fuel, which would give us a lot more time to hover near the ground. We are going into a different type of terrain on 13 than uh, was experienced on 11 and 12. If you remember, remember they went into a Mari or a sea area. We're going to go into a... Uh, hilly or highland area called Fra Mauro. Uh, because of that, uh, we have to uh, design our guidance. We have a lot more confidence in our guidance now than we had back in 11, so we can do this. Uh, but we have to have uh, close guidance so we can get into the small areas of the, of the flat terrain that we can land on. Most of it's quite hilly. Uh, I feel will be uh, rather... Uh, I don't know if it's going to be rougher or not, but it, it's going to be unpredictable because of the mountainous terrain. We use landing radar to help us determine our altitude. We're really not too sure how it's going to operate under hilly approach terrain. 11 and 12 had, uh, in their final phases of landing, had a rather smooth area which they could operate their radar. Uh, the dust situation, I don't feel, will be a problem. Uh, MIT has come up with a new program in our landing programs in the computer that should help us with the dust situation. This program will allow the system to automatically take over and null out the horizontal velocities and then bring the vehicle down, which uh, if in case the dust becomes so thick that we can't see uh, through it, uh, the vehicle will be able to go down by itself. We, of course, still have to pick the landing spot to make sure there's not a crater or a rock or a hill underneath the landing spot. One of the objectives, of course, uh, of our lunar flights is to place on the moon scientific packages which have been designed and built uh, by uh, various scientific communities and colleges, universities, and people. Uh, we do this uh, to get the most out of our lunar flights. Uh, 
the package is generally called ALSEP, which stands for Apollo Lunar Scientific Experimental Package, or words to that effect. Anyway, the package is basically a group of scientific experiments based around a power generating device and a central station that is capable of taking the uh, results of the scientific uh, of each scientific experiment and sending it back to the Earth by a communication system. Uh, each fl uh, flight has uh, different experiments on it, and of course some experiments are repeated. For instance, one of them is the uh, seismometer. We have a device which was also carried on 11 and 12 that is able to uh, record the slight motions of the lunar surface, very similar to what we have uh, for earthquake detection on the Earth. Uh, they're very sensitive devices, and I believe uh, that they have picked up uh, the venting of fuel from uh, previous spacecraft that were left on the moon. They can also pick up uh, people walking alongside of it, so they are very sensitive. We will have one of these aboard Apollo 13, which will help set up our network of seismometers on the uh, moon to help detect any uh, lunar activity. We also have two experiments which will uh, essentially try to uh, determine what atmospheric or, or what, what the atmosphere or the environment is above the lunar surface, measuring such things as protons or electrons or uh, cosmic rays. These are electrical devices that will pick up any, any flow or molecular flow or, or electrical energy that might be there. Uh, this is also used to help determine the, uh, the effect of the solar wind on the lunar surface. One of the big uh, experiments will be the drill, which Fred uh, Hayes will operate. Essentially, what, what he's doing will be uh, twofold. One is to place into the uh, lunar surface heat probes to help determine uh, some of the uh, heat flux or heat flow characteristics of the lunar surface. And the second objective is to take a core sample uh, down about 10 feet, a lot lower than we've been able to do before, and bring up this core sample intact to get a history of the lunar surface a lot deeper than we've had uh, been able to uh, in the past. Let's see, I think I've just about touched on, uh, on all of the uh, experiments. We use a, uh, a nuclear power source, of course, for the electrical plant, and uh, we have an uh, electronic central station which will activate before we leave. In the EVA, of course, we hope to expand our time on the lunar surface such that uh, we can stay out longer than was experienced on 11 and 12. We have taken the advice of uh, the previous missions. We have included a little water pack in the suit itself so we can drink on the lunar surface. This was a big complaint that the 12 crew members had. Uh, we hope to go back to a rather large crater if we do land in the proper spot, one which we have nicknamed Cone Crater and to uh, do our geology traverse in that area, which we hope to pick up some of the original or basement rock that comes from this area. We again, of course, are trying to pin down the causes and the formation of this particular uh, area on the moon, uh, which is called the Frau Marl region. Uh, the EVA times uh, have been extended. Uh, we call them open-end times now because we really don't know how things will go once we get there, and we don't want to commit ourselves to a long uh, exploration period and then not be able to fulfill it. We have designed our two uh, EVAs for four hours of work. We hope to extend that time to four and a half hours and possibly five if we have the consumables to do it and also if we feel uh, that we are able to accomplish that safely. Uh, the amount of rocks that we're going to uh, bring back. Uh, we're, we're going to try to expand the weight of them, uh, at least, uh, I guess, well, we hope at least around 80 pounds, uh, even more if we can. I think we, uh, the vehicle itself has the capability of lifting these rocks to the command module, and again, it all, it all depends on just how our timeline runs. We don't want to substitute quantity for quality, though, and we're going to try to document completely the rocks that we pick up to make it a lot easier for the scientists back on Earth to, uh, to get a better knowledge of the area and of the material we bring back.